So, I got this most amazing article from my friend the other day. She posted it on my Facebook wall. She's like, Jennifer, this is up your alley. Or I should say, Jen's Floration. But it came out a few days ago. Fourth Dimension Discovery shocks scientists around the world. Um, however, I should make it clear that actually this article came out around this time last year. So, this other weird website called uh, Kish... Kichul Shomoy. Kichul Shomoy. Kichul Shomoy. <laughs> Picked it up. Um, but regardless, the original articles are even more fascinating than this one. So let's get right into it. Okay. So this is really cool. What is the fourth dimension? It depends on who you talk to. Some people think it's the dimension of time, like in Donnie Darko. Others think it's another dimension of space, like the designer of the game Mikagori. And if you haven't seen Mikagori, I think you should look into it. And we will look into it eventually as the video goes on. Regardless, I just wanted to read to you out loud just some of these articles or some passages from these articles because it kind of helps you explain it. And at first I thought, when I was thinking about, oh, basically mainstream science and what it does, and you know our governments and non-mainstream scientists have probably found something even much bigger than this, the mere fact that they're letting us out, is this out to us, is still pretty fascinating. Um, and it's even fascinating just, even though there's nothing much that you can do with what they're telling us, it's still fascinating just to envision it. So I want to just go through this with you conceptually. So basically this article starts, physicists have understood, at least theoretical, that there may be higher dimensions besides our normal three. The first clue came in 1905 when Einstein developed his theory of special relativity. I don't know why, that seems like it should be spatial relativity to me, but oh well. Of course, by dimensions, we're talking about length, width, and height. Generally speaking, when we talk about a fourth dimension, it's con ugh, considered space-time. But here, physicists mean a spatial dimension beyond the normal three, not a parallel universe as such dimensions are mistaken for in popular sci-fi shows, although it would seem like in a way to see what they're talking about seeing that you kind of have to go into a parallel universe and I'll explain to you what I mean further below. Even if there are other dimensions somewhere out there in our universe and others, should we travel to a place which includes them, scientists aren't so sure we could even experience them. Our brains may be incapable. It's kind of like this line in a Shakespeare play I remember, um, and I can't remember which one it was. I want to say As You Like It, but one of the characters was talking about a color that we couldn't know, like a color that we wouldn't recognize, and um, or a color that had no name. And it's like funny, when you think of the full spectrum of colors, you can't imagine another color. Just as I can't imagine how you would see the equivalent, the equivalent of the fourth dimension. And they're not talking about time. Time is usually what's considered the fourth dimension in this dimension. But they're talking about, aside from depth, width, and height, they're talking about another dimension. Of course, my brain co goes to a diagonal line. But that's not quite what they're talking about either. So basically says our brains may be incapable, math, incapable. Mathematically, we can describe the fourth dimension, but we may never experience it in the physical realm. Even so, that hasn't stopped us from looking for evidence of higher dimensions. One model which helps us conceive of it easier and understand it better is a tesseract or hypercube. This is a cube within a cube. Through a helpful metaphor, it doesn't actually exist in the real world. So how might scientists actually detect the fourth dimension? Two separate research teams, one in the US and one in Europe, have completed dual experiments to do just that. Both of these were 2D experiments, which hinted at a 4D world utilizing a phenomenon known as the quantum Hall effect. The Hall effect is when you have an electronically conducive material, say a sheet of metal or a wire, in which you pass current. Well, which you pass current through. The electrons move in one direction, place a magnetic field perpendicular to the material, and instead of electrons, get diverted to the left or right by what's called the Lorentz force find a good explanation for the hall. Okay, so actually, they actually put a really good video in this article to describe the hall effect. And I love this scientist guy. I don't have the sound, well, actually I do have the sound up. I'm gonna turn it down. This scientist guy, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. Well, I'm only just gonna do this for visual effect. He's so funny. 
I love how, yeah, I love those kinds of people. They, they, have, they, get, they get the squinty eyes and it always looks like they're smiling. But he describes the quantum hall effect in more detail. It's basically like just manipulating the flow of electrons via magnets and so on and so forth. But look at this guy. Even when he's not smiling, he looks like he's smiling because he's got the squinty eyes. It's so funny. But so there's basically a hall effect. I mean, it's not too difficult to understand, but see, what I want to see is an oats effect. <laughs> Private eyes. They're watching you and all your atoms collide. But also, too, when we're talking about magnets, I just think magnets can do and have us discover and have us just help us with a lot of things. Like, I've always thought that magnets could heal us. And I remember having a really sore leg and I put a magnetic bracelet around my ankle and it totally cured the pain. I also have a magnetic mattress pad, which helps with my back pain. And look at this, these are maglev couches. This is an actual thing that's on the market. I'm sure it costs thousands and thousands of dollars, but you could sleep in a cloud above the floor and it's all done via maglev. It is the coolest, coolest thing. And you know, I just feel like magnets and sound waves can also help people heal from all manner of different diseases. Of course, if you think mainstream science is going to let that out, you're probably sadly mistaken. And I'm sure most of you are not. But maglev beds, man, that's a thing of the future. So really briefly, the result of the Hall effect is that electrons get stuck within a 2D system. They can then only move in two directions. The quantum Hall effect occurs at the quantum level, either when the material is at very the material is at very low temperatures or is subject to a very strong magnetic field. See, that's the thing. If we were to even see the fourth dimension, we'd have to be freezing our butts off, in which case we would probably just turn into glass and break, or our nipples would just be really hard at the very least or we'd be magnetically sucked out of the place, <laughs> just the way they're doing it now. So here an additional thing happens. The voltage doesn't increase normally, but instead jumps up in steps. Now, what I think they mean by that is that it jumps up in perceivable increments that have more or less a shape to them or a pattern. So it's not just random, at least that's what I got the takeaway from it. Um, by restricting electrons within the quantum Hall effect, you can also measure them. Follow the math and you'll realize the quantum Hall effect is also detectable within a 4D system. Professor Michael Reichman of Penn State University was part of the, oh, Penn State, that's where my mom and dad went, um, was part of the American team. He told Gizmondo, physically, we don't have a 4D spatial system, but we can access 4D quantum Hall physics using this lower dimensional system because the higher dimensional system is coded in the complexity of the structure. We ourselves, as 3D objects, cast a 2D shadow. A 4D object should then cast a 3D shadow. We can learn something about a 3D object by studying its shadow. So it stands to reason that we should also gain knowledge about a 4D object from its 3D shadow. Both teams in these experiments did something of that kind. They used lasers to catch a glimpse of the fourth dimension. The results of the experiments were published in two reports. And they are both in the journal of nature and the european experiment scientists took the element rubidium and cooled it down to absolute zero. Oh yeah that'd give you way harder nipples than you ever bargained for those would be like diamonds and they'd cut glass and then you'd break like glass and then you could never see the fourth dimension then they trapped atoms there within a lattice of lasers creating what researchers describe as an egg as an egg carton like crystal of light Next, they introduce more lasers to excite atoms, creating what's known as a quantum charge pump. Though atoms themselves don't have a charge, they here they um, simulated the transport of electrical charges. Subtle variations in the atoms' movements coincided with how the quantum Hall effect would play out in the fourth dimension. Now, this is really cool. So this is Mikagore. Mikagore. No, it's mi Migakure, sorry, explaining the fourth dimension. Now, this is an actual video game, and it's pretty cool because this guy talks about sort of manipulating your surroundings, but it's not so much in any kind of divining or thinking your way out of it. It's looking on different angles to see different possibilities. Like in other words, this guy's trying to get over a wall. Well, he can't get over the wall on the plane that he's in. And it's assumed that the wall extends far beyond the square. Like if we kept going, the wall would extend the way it's extending far beyond the square. 
But if you manipulate the way that you look into things and the angles that you look at things, then your environment changes. Like now, the wall's been broken down into stones, and then we go back to retro video game type imagery. Um, but what's really fascinating to me is just the way that I would envision it would be sort of like something lenticular in nature. And the way I see it as lenticular, so depending on which angle you look at something is how it changes. And you remember like those little things you used to get as a kid in your Cracker Jacks box and things would just change and shift. Usually it was only two different images, like this one here. But you get the point, right? So things just change depending on the angle you use. And I actually had, I had a dream, actually it's been a recurring dream with me, that movie theaters of the future, or well, I was in a movie theater of the future. And there was only one theater, it was a multiplex, but there was only one theater. And the reason that it was one theater, and you could see about 16 movies in it, was because the way that you could access the movie and the way that you watch the movie depended on which angle you sat at. And it was also hearing, it wasn't just seeing, it was also how you were to see it. I remember when they had lenticular, oh my gosh, I remember when they had lenticular billboards, but this isn't a very good example of it. And I don't think those ever caught on, but that's really cool. And of course, this is my favorite though, the shape-shifting reptilian, which isn't really a lenticular, that's more a trick of light. <laughs> but that's just more like an edited image. But that was always really fascinating to me too. So now scientists basically say, as far as useful applications for this new discovery, scientists have not really demonstrated any yet but it's a tremendous breakthrough that opens up new frontiers in terms of research and alters our understanding of motion itself. Such a finding assured result into greater insights into dimensions into th string theories. String theory, not string theories. But one of the other things I wanted to examine too was the Tesseract again. Now the Tesseract is something that I believe is formulated by Carl Sagan, and in this video he tries to explain what the fourth dimension would look like. It sort of culminates, and it's so funny listening to him speak because I'm thinking to myself, who does he remind me of? And he's very specific in his manner of speaking, he hits all his vowels. <laughs> But I'm like, oh my god, he's like the Jeff Goldblum of science. And then, of course, Jeff Goldblum's the Jeff Goldblum of science in Jurassic Park. But, regardless, that said, he tried to explain the best way possible how we could possibly imagine a fourth dimensional image. And it was in his construct called the Tesseract. It's basically a square within a square where all of the lines that connect all of the lines are all at right angles. Only in this dimension we have to make them diagonal. Um, and he kind of likened it to a shadow that would be cast on the ground and a shadow is sort of a projection of a 3D image, but it's distorted when it's projected as a shadow. So the lines will automatically go diagonal. And that was basically his speech. But still, it was just really, really interesting, and when I post this video, I'm going to post, see, there's the Tesseract, but the lines have to be diagonal. So when I post this video, I'm going to post the examples of what I showed you, um, but it's just something interesting to ponder. Again, like a color you can't name, it's like a thing you can't see, but for looking on a different angle at it. Anyway, it's just so fascinating, you guys. Um, just let me know what you think. I may explore this further in another video because apparently I have so much to say about it. But regardless, uh, I hope you have a great night and peace out.